Good afternoon, Dr. Bansha from Thomasat UC Hospital. So I'm talking about the tough greenoid, greenoid mode loss management. I think this is the most difficult part of the reverse because you know reverse, the key of success is a greenoid. And our greenoid is very small. You have no forgiveness. You have very narrow margin of error. Okay? So greenoid is the key of success. So first you need to know the classification of G. Walsh, right? So the problem of the severe retroversion is type B, B2, right? This is biconcave renal and also type C. These two types is the most typical that you need to deal with. So for hematoplasty, they prove that if you have the post-circular erosion or human head subluxation, the result will be poor. So this is a type 2 genoid. Tap B2 greenoid by concave. So like this. So you need CT scan. Very important. Some do arthroplasty without CT scan. I think it's too risky. Because from X-ray, even axillary review, you cannot tell the retroversion. Not 3D, just 2D. CT scan. This is a Friedman technique. You need to know how to measure. This is from the tip. Okay, Draw the line and measuring the retroversion. So if most of the time, the patient will have the chronic osteoarthritis. They will have severe retroversion. Okay? And if you do the total shoulder toplasty, you put the greenoid in retroversion, it will fail very fast. Like this. If, if you do arthroplasty without CT scan, you look at this picture, you look like normal, right? You cannot tell from intra -op. this is a severe retroversion. You cannot judge by your eyes, you need CT scan preoperatively. So, it, another thing is the posterior subluxation of the humeral head. If there's subluxation of the humeral head, that will make the result poor. Okay? So two things, number one is the retroversion, number two, how about the retroversion uh, subluxation of the humeral head. So that three options for you, total, uh, reverse or hemi. So, there's many options to deal with the greenoid bone loss. Number one is the eccentric limbing. Number two, posterior bone grafting. Number three, augmented greenoid, uh, uh, posterior greenoid or reverse. I will tell you one by one how to choose that. Eccentric limbing is like this way. You rim is a retroversion, posterior. You rim more anterior, right? You can get normal and native version. The, the problem is you create medialization. You remove the bone from the front. So the number is 15. If you go more than 15, that is too much. You will go too much medialization. And you have not enough space to put the greenoid back in. So the number of the pack should be, from this rim, should be at least 15 millimeters. Otherwise, it's not stable enough. Okay. So, remember the number 15. The second option is augmented posterior greenoid. So, you rim it in the same way. You rim it like native, but you augment posterior. Okay? But, there's many literature mentioned that if you have severe bone loss, even you augment, it will be failed over time. Okay? Like this. Okay? You rim like native version and you augment. So in the market nowadays, in Thailand, we have the one company, they have augmented posterior, but the maximum is only 12. Because if you go more than 12, you cannot. Okay, this is in the market. The posterior augmented. Okay. Another option is if you have severe bone loss, even you have intact loaded cuff, just switch it from total to reverse. Indication if you have severe retroversion more than 27 degree or you have subluxation more than 80%. So even you do total shoulder, it will be failed. Okay? And this is option for reverse. You take the graph of the humeral head, make it like by OISA. This is proposed by Pasco Bolo. They take the head from the humerus and make it like bone graft. So you can feel the defect. You can change the version and you have biologic healing, okay? This is a bio essay. How to do that? This is the way Pasco Balodu, they have a special harvester, this way, 
so they can take the graft from the humerus okay and also you can make like it wet shape okay, to fill the defect okay this is a bio i say technique for reverse shoulder toplasty okay that way so this patient 25 degree also try this of the shoulder i just do it next uh, last two weeks good rotator cuff what will you do Retro version is 20. Total augmented or uh, bone graft or reverse. What do you think? Michael, Mike. 25 degree. At 25 years old. How do you augment reverse? You, you? Total shoulder? Reverse. Reverse. You. Okay, you choose reverse. Thank you. Nata, same, right. So we did the same, right? So if the patient is very old, 25 years old, even have good loaded cuff, sometimes they have thin loaded cuff, but they have severe bone loss like that. We prefer to do reverse because your bone graft is under compression. You put this graft, it will heal. But if you put the bone graft for the total, sometimes it resolves because it's under shear force, okay? It's different. So you can augment if you have some bone loss, you can augment posterior, you can augment superior, okay? That's also available in the market. These patients, this is the worst one I have, okay? 40 degree, retroversion. Hero, actually this is the case from Hong Kong. You remember? Peter, he posted in the group and a lot of discussion. So I, I sent this to Peter. You see, this is a, he sent me the di DICOM file. And this is a comment from Professor Yongali and Juhani. You remember? If you put green oil like this way, you can penetrate. Because retroversion is too severe. And from our PSI, we found that this is so big. So we did the CT scan. We do the patient-specific instrumentation and decide and we calculate the size of the bone that we need to augment. Okay, that is, so we found that we need to augment a lot of bone from the back and we need to remove this part of the bone away. Okay, you can get the native version, also uh, in fair tilting. So I think for this kind of patient, you need to have good pre-op planning by your eyes, not is not enough. So this patient, we did the pre-op planning using the patient specific instrumentation. Okay, we take this bone out like we plan beforehand and we put this graph in. We just make this in this morning workshop. This case, the real case, PSI. And then we fix it that way. Okay? So send this to Peter. It should be this way. Okay? So after you fix this graph and the screw in, you see that we can correct the bone graph, uh, we can correct the version, and also we have stable fixation okay? for this patient. So this is the last patient. I have done my uh, uh, PSI for this patient has revision and they have the severe bone loss like that. Infection, and we put the antibiotics bit in. You see the defect is that much. So we, did, we plan using the patient specific instrumentation, put the bone graft in, okay, and the patient happy, okay. So this patient, I did operation, she fell by a motorcycle accident, broken greenoid broken prosthesis, broken screw, we get in and we need to take out everything and we need to put the bone graft on the green oil, fix it and finally we can deal with this bone defect, okay? And put this in and she's okay, happy and she stopped riding motorcycle. Okay, in conclusion, you need to know Walsh gas classification, you have good pre-op planning CT scan Retroversion less than 15, you can do eccentric rimming, you can do post augmentation, but see, we both lost more than 27, I think you, do, you should do reverse. Also, the subluxation more than 80%, you should do reverse. Thank you.